what is BCI so brain computer e interface so from the name itself you can say so your brain so we are going to take the signals or the informations from your brain and we are going to give it to a system or we are going to give it to a machine or something like that okay and that machine is going to perform on based on what you think on based on what you uh, give the command okay so that is what we are planning to do so in the previous cases it was the bci was there only for eeg kind of monitoring you know what is eeg right so in most of the hospitals for monitoring the brain activity they use the technique called eeg so in that uh, eeg technique uh, mostly like uh, they will be keeping a electrode cap on the head and they will be monitoring the electrical activity of your brain and they will be seeing it in the form of a waveform in the monitor so this is what usually we will be doing in the hospitals right so it is very much similar to that the same electrode caps we are also going to uh, use but here what we are going to do is we are going to convert these signals into a useful information and from that information we are going to convert it into a necessary action okay so the action can be performed by a machine or a microcontroller or a laptop or a android phone so okay it can be anything any device that is going to acquire the signal from our brain and it is going to carry out a certain task or certain action so that is what brain computer interface is all about okay so Based on the applications, we have come across lot of applications in BCI. So, if uh, I'll, I'll, I have listed some of uh, the applications here, starting from the brain activity measurement. So, which is the one of the you know the basic level, okay? The basic application which you have seen in the hospitals and all, na. So that EEG. So that is nothing but the brain activity measurement thing. So, and the second thing is the rehabilitation, like something like if you are. Uh, feeling more stress or if you are addicted to something or something like that there are some rehabilitation centers available in the you know in the uh, in various parts of india right so in those rehabilitation centers also these kind of eeg measurements bca kind of measurements can be used okay so these measurements can be used and they can able to treat the patients according to the electrical activity which is happening in the brain okay that is what the rehabilitation is all about and especially in robotics Okay, so robotics I have to mention because uh, uh, that is having lot of uh, scope, especially in BCI because you are going to control a robotic arm or you are going to control a humanoid robot or something like that from your thoughts. Yeah, the because uh, why this thoughts is necessary is because we are controlling these robots with the help of some uh, you know actuators, something like uh, you have the joystick kind of thing, or you can use some accelerometer kind of thing. So, so there are a lot of methods to control a robot. But why we need thoughts? So that is because most of the patients, especially the who by paralyzed or something like that, so the stroke, especially stroke attack the patients and all, they can't able to move their hands or legs. Okay, they can't even uh, move their fingers. So during that time, we are we can use their brain activity because the persons who are attacked by paralysis, it doesn't mean that their brain activities are lesser or you know they can't able to think and all. So they have they can have the ability to think. So using that thinking capability, we can able to make a robot or make a machine to move, or we can make a system to react to what he is saying, he or she is trying to say. So those kind of applications and all this uh, BCA comes into picture. I will be showing some uh, demos on at the end of the session. There you can be able to get a clear idea on where the robotics comes into picture. Okay, and especially in entertainment kind of field, also this BCA has come, especially in gamings. So in most of the gamings, uh, instead of using the joystick and all, we can use our brain. So we can, if we think to move the object to the left, or if we think to move the move the object to the right, or something like that, we can control the direction of the uh, you know object in the game. So we can make lot of gamings in this, especially in uh, BCI. And especially in automobiles and all, you have a lot of applications, especially like uh, drowsiness detection and all, you could have seen. The many uh, faculty members could have seen uh, in their research papers and all. So mostly like uh, if you are driving a car and if you are feeling any drowsiness inside the car or something like that, immediately 
so from the your brain the signals can be acquired by the automobile system and it can automatically you know uh, bring your uh, car to the side lines and you can uh, easily park it so it will assist you to park so for those kind of applications and all this bcis are very much useful and home automation and all bci has become saturated because for controlling the home appliances through our thoughts through the attention which you are giving okay so these uh, applications are all becoming saturated in the market and especially i want to mention you the last point which is artificial intelligence because if you are taking this bci as one of the research based project if you combine this bci with artificial intelligence you can have a better scope okay especially for the you know for uh, the research based papers which you are publishing on ieee and all if you combine this bci with ai it will have a more powerful application especially for disease diagnosis kind of application and all you have lots and lots of uh, scope there so i have did uh, with the help of the alzheimer kind of uh, detection and all okay so you have the disease called alzheimer right so most um, mostly we call it as memory loss so for those kind of uh, actions and all we need to know how the electrical activity is happening inside their brains so by grabbing those activities with the help of bci and once we grab the data we can apply some artificial intelligence algorithm to it and we can able to do some predictions on it so it is mostly by combining the bci technology and the ai technology together to achieve this kind of goal so especially for research these kind of things will be very much useful for you so that is one thing and so these are some of the application i have given you so this is very fewer percentage you have lots and lots of scope there and uh, before heading into you know the demos and uh, the things so we need to know about how our brain works okay so mostly our brain works with the help of a device called neurons okay so this neurons are available you know in billions in our body you have this billions and billions of neurons are available these neurons are interconnected together okay every neurons are interconnected together and they started to transfer electrical signal between them so if you if you, if you for example if i want to uh, you know sleep okay if i am sleeping kind of thing so during that time there will be a peculiar amount of electrical activity will be happening in between the neurons in our brain okay so if you are especially talking okay during that time also there will be some distinct kind of an uh, electrical activity will be happening inside our neurons so by detecting that particular electrical activity we can able to come up with some solutions or we can able to come up with some detections okay so that is what happening especially even if you are blinking your eyes so during that time also there will be some electrical activity in some of the neurons in our brain okay by grabbing those thing we can able to identify that we are blinking and we can give some command to some of the machine to work okay so for those kind of applications and all we can make use of these neurons so before heading into neurons we need to know what are all the types of neurons available in our body so these are some of the neurons which is available one is sensory neuron motor neuron inter neurons and then neurons in brain okay and for giving explanation to each and every neurons i can give you with a simple example so say for example you are having a hot object before you okay there is one hot object which is uh, you know placed before you so i am just going to touch that particular object there so immediately what will happen the sensory neurons in my hand okay in under my skin so there will be the sensory neurons what it will do is it will create a particular electrical activity so it will create the electrical signals so based on the touch based on the object which i am touching it okay if it is a hot object so corresponding electrical signal will be generated by this particular sensory neuron and it will be transferred to our neurons in brain okay what our neurons in brain will do is it will take the decision okay whether to take off our hands or whether to keep it okay because if it is a hot object obviously we will be take off the hands because it will give you some pain okay so that decision has to be taken from the neurons in our brain okay so based on the signals which is sent from the sensory neuron your neurons in brain will make a decision by doing some electrical activity there and it will give you the decision in the form of motor neurons 
okay so whether to take off the hand or not so that signals will be sent to the motor neurons so because that is the one which is responsible for taking a quick action so if you want to take off the hand if you want to give some reflexes to your hand something like that see these motor neurons are giving you the necessary reflexes there okay so the inter neurons are the one which is responsible for connecting all these neurons together mostly this inter neurons are uh, coming under the central nervous system of your body okay so when if you want to transfer the signals between the sensory neurons and the motor neurons from the neurons in brain these inter neurons will be acting as a intermediate intermediate channel to transfer these signals to the neurons in brain so these are some of the neurons so which is available in our there are lot of different types also is there but based on the application based on the operation it performs i have categorized some of the neurons here here especially i have highlighted the neurons in brain here a lot number of time because the neurons in brain are not much similar to your sensory neurons or motor neurons or interneurons because neurons in brains are more complex and more you know more in number okay so in order to understand the strategy of these kind of neurons in brain it will take much study okay now unlike your sensory neurons or motor neurons the study of the neurons in brains is very much complex because if you take example of your brain you will be having billions of ne neurons which will be hidden inside your you know brain so the signal acquisition which we are doing for eeg uh, you know eeg kind of uh, uh, measurements and all we are acquiring only the signals which is available on the outer layer of the brain only so the neurons which is available on the outer layer of the brain na so only those neurons from the neurons only we are picking up the signals we are not focusing on the inter neurons which is available inside the brain okay in the, in the center part of the brain and all you have lot of hidden neurons available so we can't able to grab those signals if especially we are, if you are using any uh, non invasive kind of uh, electrodes there okay so this neurons in brains are very much complex and it me it needs lot of expertise to study okay so that is one thing we need to consider so in the next thing is so in order to read the electrical signals from these neurons we need a special type of you know uh, electrodes okay this special type of sensors is needed to grab the sen uh, grab the electrical signals from our brain so these electrical signals are of very much lesser amplitude so it will be in microvolts or millivolt so you need to have one better solution better sensor to grab these sen these uh, signals and we need to convert this uh, lesser amplitude signal to a higher level with the help of some amplifiers or filtering circuits we need to do some circuitry there and in order to convert the lower signal into a higher level of signals okay so i will be discussing with those circuits later so now please consider for grabbing these kind of uh, signals from our brain we need electrodes something like this okay which is uh, shown on the monitor so these electrodes are mostly made up of some expensive materials like gold and silver because these gold and silver will have the high you know acquisition capability of a signal so that is why we are using these kind of gold and silver and mostly in bci systems these electrodes are the ones which will consume more money okay it will be the most costlier part of your bci system because uh, more the number of electrodes more the number of information you can get from the brain that is one of the thumb rule we need to remember so please if you have any note or pen with you please grab it now because uh, the measurements which i am going to tell you will be little bit of uh, you know uh, need some uh, max there so please um, uh, take notes and pens with you i will explain you one of the basic and the commonly used standard for placing the electrodes on the skull before heading to this we need to know some terminologies of our skull okay this is very important so most of the ieee papers will be giving these kind of terminologies there so we need to know uh, about these also before uh, doing this uh, say for example if you are focusing on a point between your eyebrows okay if you are focusing on a point between your eyebrows that is called as nasian okay the term called nasian so exactly you know uh, below so exactly behind your nasian at the uh, back head of your skull we call it as the point called inian okay we need to identify these two terms okay nasian and inian and especially there are two other points on the sideways we call it as right preauricular point and left preauricular point 
So now what I am going to do is I am going to measure using a measurement tape. I am going to measure what is the distance between my pre auricular point and the left auricular point, the right auricular point and the left auricular point. And then I am going to measure the distance between the nasian and the inian. Okay, likewise from the nasian, I have to take 10% of the total distance. Okay, my total distance is 40%, right? So I have to take the 10% of the total distance and I have to mark a point here. Okay, and from that point, I have to take another 20% and I have to make another point. Okay, likewise, I have to make 10, 20, 20, 20, 20 and 10. So these percentages of distances has to be measured and we have to make a point over there using some marker or something like that, we have to make a point there, something like this. Okay. So these are the points. First, we have to make a note. So once you have finished measuring your nasian to inian distance, next we have to measure the right preauricular point to the left preauricular point. Okay. So similar manner, you have to, uh, you know, separate the distance like 10%, 20, 20, 20, something like that. Okay. So that is why this standard is called 10, 20 standard of e, uh, EEG measurement. Okay. The standard name is itself is a 10, 20 standard. Okay, so the reason behind that is because we are measuring it with the help of the 10 and 20 percentage for placing the electrodes. Okay, so likewise you have to place the points in the lateral side also. Okay, now you have done it in the vertical manner as well as in the horizontal manner. Okay, the X point which is mentioned here is nothing but the where your electrodes are going to be placed. Okay, and now what we are going to do is we are going to draw a circle around this particular outer electrodes okay we are going to draw a circle something like this okay now what we are going to do is we are going to you know place the electrodes exactly at the center of this particular curve okay if you take example of this uh, particular electrode and this one okay so i will uh, show you in this using pointer option so please listen here. So you have one electrode here, okay, on the uh, right auricular point and you have one more electrode on the nasian, okay. So now the points, the curve which is connecting between these two electrodes will have a center point, right. So in that center point, I will mark the point for placing the electrode, okay, something like this, okay. So this is the electrode point which I have marked between these two electrodes okay similarly i have to do it for all the four sides of my curve okay so the center point of the each and every curve has to be marked with a point electrode point okay and once that is done what we have to do is uh, you after you complete the outer electrodes now what you have to do is you have to come to the inner electrode okay you have two electrodes at the inner side right so now what you have to do is you have to draw a curve something like this Okay, on the lateral side, on the vertical side, you have to draw a curve, something like this. Okay, once you do this, you have to mark the electrode points at the each end of these curves, both at the front side as well as at the back side. Okay, so this is how we will place the remaining electrodes. Okay, and now by measuring these two electrode points, we will get another center point there, right? So say for example, something like this. So you have drawn the curve for the vertical side and you will be drawing another curve at the horizontal side similar to the vertical side okay now the two of the curves will be intersecting on a particular point right in that point we will be placing the inner electrodes okay. this is how we will place the electrodes okay in our skull now once these electrodes are placed okay once these electrodes are placed now what we have to do is we have to name these particular electrodes okay this is how we will be naming it okay so the electrodes which is on the front side so that is on the nasian side of your skull na? so that we call it as frontal okay and the electrodes which is on the central okay the center side of your skull that we call it as central so the terms which is uh, starting with f is called frontal and the term which is starting with c is called central okay and at the back okay where your union is there right so at the back side the electrode which will be placed will be having the term called p in it so p means parietal okay parietal lobe will be available in your brain so based on that name they have given the electrode as parietal uh, electrodes there 
and at last you will be having occipital electrodes. So occipital electrodes are very much near to your ineon. Okay, and uh, on the right preauricular point and the left preauricular point, we call the electrode as temporal. Okay, so these are some of the terms we need to remember. And you are giving some numbering to each and every electrodes uh, here, right? So here you'll be having two, eight, four, eight, or something like that, right? So here the electrodes which is on the center, say for example F, C, and P, so which is mentioned on the center, na? So that is called as zero electrodes. It doesn't have any number on it, so it is mentioned as zero electrode. That is why it is given with the name of F is it, C is it, and P is it. Okay, and the electrodes which is placed on the right side of your skull will be named with the even numbers. Okay, and the electrodes which is placed on the left side of your skull will be named with the odd numbers. Okay, please remember this terminology. The electrodes which is at the center will have zero magnitude. and the electrode which is having at the right side it will be numbered with even numbers and on the left side with the odd numbers please remember this okay so this is the naming terminology naming convention we have to make once we place the electrodes okay so based on this naming only we will be doing the further analysis there before grabbing it we need to know how to grab the signals you know how to analyze these signals because you will be having some you know uh, complex waveforms will be coming here and there from each and every electrode so we need to identify we need to have some common reference point for identifying these kind of waveforms okay there are different methods to grab the signals from these electrodes okay i'm going to give you some methods here so this is one of the basic method which you can see okay using a differential amplifier okay using this what i can do is i can grab any two input signals from any two electrodes say for example you have the electrode called f8 here and t8 here okay so i will grab the input signal from f8 and t8 and i will be giving it to a differential amplifier and what this differential amplifier will basically do it will find out the difference of signal between the two input signals and it will give you the output okay so based on the output i can do some inferences there okay this is one way okay this is one way of doing that because as i told you before the amplitude of the brain signals will be very much lesser okay it will be in microvolt or millivolt okay so if you are using a differential amplifier so here i have given very much simply one of the amplifier here but the actual eeg circuit will not be like this okay the eeg circuit will be very much complex and it will be very much bigger because why the reason is because if you are grabbing a signal from my uh, you know brain it will be very much smaller so it has to be amplified that is one thing but while amplifying it should not be amplified along with the noise because the electrodes which you are going to use it can be both dry or as well as wet okay there are two kind of electrodes which i forgot to mention you one is dry electrode and another one is the wet electrode okay so especially in dry electrodes what will happen is because of the environmental noise or dust or something like that what will happen is it will consume the noise along with the input signal okay the waveform will not be stable okay so the waveform will be acquired along with the noise signal so now if you amplify it what will happen your input signal will be amplified along with the noise signal here in most of the eeg waveforms and all the gain will be in 1000 and 1500 okay so if, if any small amount of noise is there in the input signal it will be magnified to a huge amount of signal in the output of the amplifier okay so a better circuitry has to be made in order to acquire these kind of brain signal that we have to consider okay here what we will do is we will take a common reference from our ear okay so in most of the eeg caps it comes with, along with the ear clip so i will take the ear clip ear clip signal as one of the common reference to each and every differential amplifiers here so all your you know uh, in non inverting term, terminal of your uh, operational amplifier will be connected to the common reference of your ear clip okay and all the inverting uh, terminal of your differential amplifier will be connected to the electrodes okay so by this also you can able to grab the individual signals from your electrodes okay if you grab these kind of signals it will be individual in nature it will not combine any two electrodes or it will not give you any difference between two electrodes and all 
it is the exact individual electrode signal if you want to grab it you need to have one common reference point in your body mostly it will be on your ears okay that is one thing i want to mention you likewise you have lot of other montages also like the transverse and the longitudinal transverse transverse and longitudinal uh, especially like uh, the last one if you can see here they will keep the common reference as c z electrode okay the last one if you can see so they will keep the c z electrode which is at the exact center point of our skull na so that will be taken as the common reference and we will measure all the other electrode signals okay this is one of the montages which is available and uh, there is one more montage over here so here the ear clip will be acting as the two reference points here if you want to calculate the electrode signals of the right side the right clip will be used and the, if you want to uh, measure the left side of your brain then the left clip will be used as the common reference to calculate the each and every electrode signals there so this is another type of montage so based on the application you have to choose which montage will be useful for me so say for example i am doing the eye blink okay for in order to say for example i am doing an eye blink okay so if the eye is at the frontal side of your brain right so eye is at the frontal side of your brain so the most of the waveforms which you get, you know grabbed from the eeg signal right so it will be looking something like this okay i have taken the differential input say for example i have calculated that the signal between fp2 and f8 likewise t4 tb uh, t8 or f7 t3 t3 t5 something like that i have taken the differential input from two electrodes and i have grabbed the signal something like this okay this is the output waveform i obtained but if you do a eye blink most of the waveforms which is on the front side say for example the electrodes which starts with the letter f so that will be in the frontal side of your brain right so those waveforms will only be affected so you can see some dips here right so if you blink the eye you can see some dip at this particular point okay so these dips are nothing but so your eyeball is moving so especially if you imagine if you are uh, blinking your eyes if you are closing your eyes what will happen your eyeball will automatically go to the top okay your uh, upper side of your uh, you know eyes will be covered with your eyeball okay so during that motion there will be a electrical activity happening in the frontal lobe of your brain okay that electrical activity will be captured by the frontal electrodes which is pl placed on the front side of your brain so that will give you some dips something like this dips in the waveform something like this okay using this you can analyze that you are blinking the patient is blinking okay so based on that we can do some actions so once the patient patient is blinking we can make a necessary action on the machine say for example in one of the uh, projects which we did which is something like a you know a wheelchair okay so that wheelchair can be controlled with the help of bci so during that technique if i want to move the wheelchair if i want to stop the wheelchair okay what i can do is i can able to uh, measure the eye blink okay so if the person is blinking the eyes the uh, wheelchair will move if again if the person is blinking the eye the uh, wheelchair will stop something like that okay i can give some necessary commands based on the eye blinks happening there so likewise only you have to analyze the waveform here and another important thing is this is okay for eye blink okay so if it is eye blink there will be a large amount of dip will be happening in the waveform but it is not in the case of all the other scenarios this is a normal eeg waveform which you are uh, which is grabbed using the awake state okay when you are awake this is the waveform which is grabbed okay from this what is the inference you can make that is one thing we have to consider okay so for making the inferences we need to consider five different signals here one is gamma beta alpha theta and delta kind of waveforms are needed to be detected from the signals which are acquired from the eeg waveform okay so each and every waveform will have its own meaning say for example if you are focusing on the delta waveform okay mostly this delta waveforms will be of you know the lesser frequency okay the frequency will be very much lesser between 0 to 4 hertz only okay so these kind of waveforms are responsible for sleep and dreaming when you are sleeping only this uh, delta waveforms only will be got from the eeg acquisition 
okay when you are focusing on theta waveform that means you are drowsy okay sometimes you you will feel the drowsiness right so especially in automobile application which i mentioned you before so if you want to detect that drowsiness state and all this theta waveform only you have to focus on okay and if you are focusing on the you know uh, the busy mind or the active mind state of your brain there comes your beta the beta signals so here the uh, frequency will be little bit higher so if you see the frequency will be keep on increasing from the lower to higher okay so the gamma is the one which is having the higher frequency waveform okay it is happening only when you are doing some problem solving or if you are concentrating on some object very you know very curiously or something like that okay in those cases this gamma waveform will come into picture okay so using these waveforms you have to identify which is my alpha which is my theta and which is my delta and all okay from the frequency you have to identify that okay from this frequency so if you can see here here the frequency is little bit higher okay so at this particular point the frequency is little bit higher around uh, you know 10 to 12 hertz of frequency is available at this particular point okay so i can say it will be very much similar to your alpha or beta kind of signal there so immediately i can say that particular person is in a busy or active mind okay so as i told you this is an awake waveform right so awake waveform means mostly that person might be busy minded okay that my, that uh, particular person might be having a you know reflective mind or a busy mind or an active mind so that is why these kind of waveforms are got in this particular eeg waveform which is obtained okay this is how you have to do the analysis on the waveform and in order to grab these signals the electrode placements are very much necessary as i told you before if the electrode placements are not proper you can't able to grab a good information from that particular eeg waveform so there are some available headsets okay in the market okay you can make use of these headsets also but the only difficulty here is it is more expensive so that we also we have to consider while doing the research especially if you are doing any cost effective system for eeg and all these headsets will be very much costlier but the only advantage of these headsets are they will be giving the inbuilt circuitry in it okay you don't need to uh, you know you don't need to do any circuit by yourself you don't need to uh, you know design a circuit for signal acquisition filtering and amplification and all all the circuits will be given by themselves in the uh, electrode cap itself electrode uh, headsets itself they will be giving those circuits so you don't need to worry about that you can just grab the signal and then you can able to do some analysis on your laptops okay these headsets are coming both with wired as well as wireless also so using bluetooth or wifi also you can able to connect with these headsets and you can easily able to grab the signals from your brain and you can do some analysis there so this is one thing so this is one of the project which is uh, named as utha array okay this is one of the interesting project where they have implanted 256 number of electrodes imagine so we are talking about only 16 channel of electrodes only but what they did is they have imparted 256 number of electrodes on the brain okay and uh, these electrodes are not implanted on the skull it is implanted inside the skull okay can you get my point so if you see this video it can do n number of things which uh, human can't imagine say for example if you take example of this now if we can see here this robotic arm is being controlled by the woman who is sitting there okay so 256 number of electrodes are placed on that particular woman's skull actually okay and they are grabbing the signal from that uh, woman's brain and they are controlling this particular robotic arm imagine it is very you know that particular uh, woman can't able to move their hand or something like that okay they using their thought itself they can able to move a robotic arm and they can do the necessary assist to her okay that is one thing so this uta array is not something like the you know the electrodes which we have seen in the previous cases okay so this uta array is something like a chip okay this chip will be having some you know uh, some you know uh, something like thorns okay something needle like structures will be available on this particular 
IC okay this chip will be directly imported on the brain and they are grabbing the electrical signals from the brain and they are controlling these kind of electrical arms so this is one of the beautiful application which I have seen in the recent days okay this is one thing and the second demo which I want to show you is this is one of the application designed by one of the student to control a drone with the help of mind okay so especially for you know in most of the digital assistant you know kind of application and all a drone will be keep on following you and it will be doing the tasks which you say okay so for those applications and all you don't need to control it with the help of some joysticks or some with the help of some transmitters and all you don't need to do that you just need to think whether to take a picture or whether to move from whether to follow you or whether to lift take off whether to stop or something like that you can think by your your uh, brain and you can able to control these kind of drones there okay this is one of the drone which is uh, controlled by uh, this is designed by a student in a foreign country this is also one of the amazing thing which i have seen and uh, another demo i want to show you is this is me okay so i have did one uh, eg application for controlling the electrical appliances okay here i have did this using a raspberry pi so raspberry pi most of the people have uh, heard about it and many you could have done the programming on that it supports python so python is one of the powerful uh, software that you, using that programming language you can do lot of things in bci so this i have done it using bci only so here there is a electrical bulb which is lying before me what i am going to do is i am going to focus my attention on that bulb and i am going to glow it okay this is one of the application which i did in the recent days so for the, for doing this i have used one headset okay you, in the video itself you can able to see there is one headset which i am wearing it does not have any uh, you know multiple number of electrodes in it it does it have only minimum number of electrodes because i am going to do the application only on the attention of my brain attention signal is alone is needed in order to make a bulb turn on i don't need any other information so what i did is i bought this particular headset from the market okay and then this uh, it will having only the lesser amount of electrodes using the signals from these electrodes i try to control the uh electrical appliances so this electrode i wanted to show you uh if you can see here this electrode has the capability to send the electrical signal with the help of bluetooth okay so directly you can grab the signal from bluetooth signal itself okay what i did is using bluetooth i grabbed that signal to my raspberry pi and from the raspberry pi i did one simple python code to control the electrical appliances okay so there are some inbuilt libraries available in the market i wanted to show you that so there is one library called mindwave python okay mindwave mobile sorry there is one library called mindwave mobile so which you can download it from the github okay there is a website called github from that you can download it and in this uh, particular uh, python file you can able to grab the signals from your headsets especially wireless headsets and all you can able to grab the signals from your headsets and you can able to do some calculations there okay so this is one of the uh, library which i have used in that particular demo okay so please make a note of that and the next demo i wanted to tell you is, so this is the headset i wa i was using it's brain link okay the headset name which i have used is brain link it is one of the efficient one which has only minimum number of electrodes and it will not consume much cost okay so using bluetooth i have connected with my raspberry pi and this is the python program which i have used this is one of the sample i have given and based on the threshold which i got from the you know particular uh, eeg waveform i have uh, turned on the electrical appliance this is one thing and finally i would like to talk about one of the emerging application emerging technology which is proposed by elon musk okay elon musk is uh, one who is the founder of spacex and uh, you know the tesla the tesla the electrical cars you could have heard of that so he is the founder of that he is recently given one uh, talk about neuralink 
okay so neural link is the technology which is uh, the advanced level of this bci which we are talking about okay so the bci is something like we will be placing some electrodes on the scalp and we will be collecting some data right but neural link is something like they are going to do these electrodes in the form of hair like structures it is of very much lesser size if you can see here so this uh, b section of this particular uh, you know chip okay here you can see some b section right so here you will be having some n number of hair like structures okay so these hair like structures will be of the count of 96 okay there will be totally 96 hair like structures each hair will have 32 electrodes in it imagine so you have totally 96 hairs so each and every hair will have 32 electrodes up totally 3072 channels of electrodes can be imported on our brain you imagine how much amount of information you can grab it from your brain okay how much amount of you know uh, the data you can grab it and you can able to perform the necessary application there okay so this is one then they have uh, also given one usb provision there okay so you can import these hairs inside your scalp and what you can do is you can grab it with the help of these kind of usb provisions there you can directly connect with your laptop imagine so this is one of the thing which is introduced by uh, elon musk recently and this is tested on uh, one of a rat okay the rat which is imported uh, with this particular chip and they have analyzed the waveform of that particular rat so they have got many information from it okay and uh, for imparting these kind of hairs and all you can't do uh, by you know uh, normally by the headsets and all you know you need to do some operation on the head okay so you have to do some operation on the head with the help of robots and you have to implant these kind of hairs inside the brain so this is one of the technology which is introduced which is uh, amazing one and if you have time just uh, uh, go into the youtube and look into it and what is the use of it because why do we need to implant these kind of uh, you know hairs inside our brain and if you want why we need to grab all these things okay so what he proposes it especially for uh, the you know uh, the diseases like parkinson and all so parkinson disease and all there is no cure okay in many people are getting affected because of those kind of diseases okay so the parkinson disease and all uh, like you need to understand the electrical activity of the brain first then only you can able to do some treatments there okay so understanding that electrical activity itself is very much complex you need to have much information from the brain so for those applications and all if you have multiple number of electrodes on your brain you can able to grab as much of information from your brain and you can able to uh, give some necessary correct treatment to your brain okay for those applications and all you need n number of electrodes have to be implanted on the brain because this is one of the application the, uh, which he proposes and along with that they the, he is proposing like there is a, a chance of doing a digitalized telepathy okay you know what is telepathy right you can able to transfer the information from one brain to another brain without any you know uh, language without any body language or without any voice or something like that you can able to transfer the data from your brain directly into another brain okay this is also the uh, one of the beautiful application he proposes i don't know how much it is going to you know come into the market but uh, as long as uh, research we have done okay what he has done on the rat and all it is very much amazing he has did it is given a futuristic solution to many things okay so if you have time just look into it you will be very much amazed okay so by this i will end this session okay by giving some uh, design challenges and tips to you because whenever you are doing these kind of uh, you know researches there are the things which has to be considered so one is the electrode selection so that is very much important because electrode is the much costlier one in your bci system as i told you before because these electrodes are made up of expensive materials like uh, gold or silver or something like that so you have to select the right electrodes okay so based on the electrical conductivity of it okay there is one uh, term called conductivity right so the conductivity rate has to be seen for each and every electrode and then only you have to choose it if uh, if it is having more conductivity that means what you can grab more amount of signal without any impedance there okay so those kind of electrodes has to be selected perfectly and the second thing is noise rejection 
so as i told you before if you are doing the amplification in that uh, in that with the gain of 1000 and 1500 uh, kind of gains so during that time a small amount of noise also will affect the whole process so the noise is one of the you know major thing which has to be consider while you are doing these kind of eeg application so proper circuitry has to be made for doing this noise rejections okay that is the second thing i want to mention you and the third thing is there are difference between dry electrodes and the wet electrodes mostly wet electrodes will give you the better acquisition than the dry electrodes because dry electrodes will mostly uh, accompanied with some dust or something like that so it will give you lesser amount of accuracy when compared with wet electrodes but mostly if you are uh, looking for any wearable kind of application especially for uh, having some commercialized application and all you can't go for wet electrodes because uh, it is very much uh, you know difficult to wear and there are some procedures to do uh, in order to you have to fill some gels on each and every electrodes and there are some uh, methods to do it so you can't do it for wearable kind of applications there you can use dry electrodes and the fourth thing i want to mention is the adc resolution that is very important thing because once you grab the signal from the electrodes what you have to do is you have to select the processor which has the higher adc resolution because when the resolution is higher the precise amount of uh, data you can get from that particular uh, waveform okay so the resolution is very much important while choosing the processor and the another important thing is how much adc channel your particular processor supports whether it supports 8 channel or 16 channel or 32 channel so that you have to consider because based on the number of electrodes only you have to choose the number of adc channel in your processor please don't select the processor first and then select the electrode okay based on the elect uh, based on the application first select the number of electrodes and then go for the processor okay this is the right way to uh, you know develop a bci kind of application okay and finally your yeah, expertise or skill set is needed to handle these kind of uh, eeg thing because if the placement of these electrodes are slightly varied or something like that it will give you a different waveform which uh, which you are not expecting okay which which you cannot be used for any study or something like that it will give you a wrong inference there okay so a proper expertise is needed especially for placing the electrodes and for uh, uh, designing the circuitry and all okay have some consultancy with some of the doctors or something like that and do some uh, you know research on that particular thing especially if you are designing your own bci systems okay that is very much important there and finally you have to if you are focusing on portable as well as cost efficient system i suggest you to go for creating these kind of electrodes by yourself please don't buy it from the market with the help of some 3d printed so kind of etc and all please don't buy it buy it from the market please do it by yourself that is the only suggestion i want to give you and it will consume much time i i give i i also say that it will consume much time but it will give you a better you know cost efficiency there and finally if your bci is incorporated with machine learning or artificial intelligence it will give you a lot of scope in especially in research areas okay if you uh, go into the ieee explore and if you looking for this kind of bci so most of the bci papers will be accompanied with artificial intelligence there so especially for any particular specific disease diagnosis and all these kind of uh, two platforms are coming together to give much solutions there so if you have time just go into that and look into various uh, papers there study various papers i know these papers will be given with some uh, you know biological terminologies okay it will not be uh, like your other electronic papers it will be accompanied with some biological terms also there is no other go you have to learn the biological structure also okay so you can uh, think that i am an electronics engineer and why don't i why want to uh, learn about these kind of biological terms you can't think like that because this system comprises of both you have to learn about the body as well as the computer or the kind of algorithms you are doing okay both are very much mandatory if you are focusing on bci okay so with that note i am ending this session